Hello everyone and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for August 10th, 2020. This is the time of the week that we get together and talk about all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware. Um, this meeting normally happens at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific on Mondays. You can check the CircuitPython channel on the Adafruit Discord um, for notices of changes and links to past meetings. And we also have a calendar now, so if you want to know ahead of time when there are changes, which usually are around US holidays, uh, you can do that and that calendar should be updated. Um, you can join us anytime at, uh, on the Adafruit Discord at adafru.it slash discord. Uh, this meeting is recorded. We record the text channel for the CircuitPython channel and we record the audio from folks in the CircuitPython voice channel. This is all released on YouTube as a video and many podcast services as a podcast. If you would rather not have your voice recorded, you can say that you are text only and uh, we will read off your notes when we get to you or you can add them to the accompanying notes document. Uh, the notes document ha will have time codes in it. Um, it covers all the things that we discuss in the beginning of the meeting and then all the things that everyone discusses in the later parts of the meeting. Um, if you are missing the meeting and you'd like to contribute anyway, you can absolutely do that. Update the notes doc, which is provided a week ahead of time, and we will read it off when we get to you. To speak during the meeting, uh, you need to be a member of the Circuit Pythonistas role. So if you are not and you wish to talk during the meeting, please let us know so we can add you to that role. We had uh, some problems with spammers, so we had to lock it down. Um, that role is also notified when there's changes to the meetings or if there are serious issues with CircuitPython. Sometimes we notify that role as well. Um, let's see. Uh, CircuitPython development is supported by Adafruit. Um, please support them by purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. And I should have said, I'm Katni, and I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Um, let's see, I feel like I'm missing something. Um, if I did, I don't know what it is, so moving on. The meeting is in uh, five parts. First part is community news, which is an overview of the uh, Python for hardware um, newsletter. Uh, so it's a bunch of things happening in the world surrounding Python on hardware and CircuitPython. Um, the second bit is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, which is a statistical overview of the entire project. Gives us a chance to discuss it separate from what it is we're up to and just get a look at the health of the whole situation. Um, that is in multiple sections where um, I will discuss it overall, Scott will discuss the core, I will discuss the libraries, and Melissa will discuss Blinka. Uh, next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is the first of two round robins where uh, we will start with the person running the meeting and then go down the list alphabetically and loop back around when we get to the bottom. Um, if you are text only or lurking, I will read your notes off. Um, if you're lurking and you have no notes, I will skip over you. And um, that's pretty much how that goes. Um, so we will try to let you know who's up next um, or whether it's someone who's text only or notes and so on um, to give you an idea when you'll be calling on you. Uh, status updates is also held as a round robin. I just didn't say what hug reports were. Hug reports are a chance to call somebody out for doing something good. Um, so take a couple minutes to let us know who's been doing awesome things in the community and um, that's what uh, hug reports are. Status updates is also a round robin. Uh, however, it's um, letting us know what you've done over the past week since the last meeting and what you are going to do over the next week until the next meeting. Um, it's just a chance for us to sync up on what's going on. It's also an opportunity to give t uh, tips and tricks to folks who have uh, questions or if they're working on something and they're struggling and you have an idea, you can pop it in during uh, that discussion. The last bit is called In the Weeds. In the Weeds is for more open form uh, or open long form discussions. 
and the plan there is if you have something now um please please put it in the weeds put it with your name so we can um either read it off if you're lurking or text only um or so we can turn it over to you when that time comes sometimes there's some in the weeds discussions that come out of status updates and that's fine if that's the case please put it in when we you get to it but the idea is that we don't want to be waiting for people to provide topics um, once we hit in the weeds so if you have in the weeds topics please provide them sooner rather than later and that is how this meeting goes so with that i am going to scroll back up in this document here i'm going to take a time code and get started so first part is community news this is an overview of all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware. First up, uh, Make Magazine, The Rise of Python and Annual Microcontrollers issue. Make Magazine's new issue is on its way to subscribers. It's their annual guide to microcontroller boards and features the new Adafruit Clue board, which is programmable in CircuitPython. Um, and there's a link to Twitter and um, to the author. And the Make Maker's Guide to Boards is also on their web on the Make website. And there's a link to that in the notes. Um, the CircuitPython 6 art has been released. Uh, Adafruit has released some nice artwork for the CircuitPython 6 debut. Um, that will be available as a poster and uh, be available or will be shown um, all over the place uh, as 6.0 progresses. The CircuitPython subreddit hits 1,000 users uh, across the 1,000 member mark um this past week thank you to reddit readers for choosing to get a python fix on this subreddit um adafruit is dedicated to providing news on python and circuit python in one's chosen way whether via blog newsletter video instagram or on reddit um there's plenty of different options a pip user experience survey uh, the Python package manager PIP team is working to improve the, the usability of PIP for all users. Right now, it, a lot of what PIP does can be confusing and complicated for people who are not Python experts. The team's objective is to understand how to improve that. You can read about this work on the Python Software Foundation website or on a Python podcast. Right now, the team wants to speak to users about a number of topics. They're interested in speaking with people of all Python, all levels of Python experience. They can't stress enough, you don't need to be a programming expert to take part. In fact, they're specifically looking to hear from those who are not programmers. They're looking for diverse users to take part in the research. If you use PIP, they are interested in hearing from you. Uh, if you're interested in speaking with the team about your experiences, first thing to do is to sign up for the UX studies. And there is a link. Uh, open source at Google. There's two graphs, um, and it's a summary of contributions Google has provided to open source. Uh, they state that their intentions are twofold, give back to communities they, they depend on, as well as expand support for open source overall. Google firmly believes in open source and its ability to bring users together with contributors and companies alike. And there's a link to their blog. Um, there is multiple projects using combining CircuitPython and the Pimeroni Rainbow Hat. Uh, and Adafruit Clue is controlling the Rainbow Hat from Pimeroni using the bit to pi from Fortronics to provide connectivity. Uh, simultaneous LED animation in the seven, on the seven dot stars and fading the brightness of the four 14 segments display. And that's a, that was posted to Twitter. And also a new feather cap for connecting Adafruit feathers to Raspberry Pi hats, also shown on Twitter. And finally, CircuitPython Day is 9-9. Nine nine. Uh, Adafruit has chosen September 9th, 2020 as the snakiest day of this year. Much of, more to come on events, including CircuitPython team live stream, collaboration with hardware and software folks, and highlighting all things Python and Python on hardware. Um, if you uh, more more information will be forthcoming, and if you have any ideas or you want to host your own CircuitPython Day event, please send all of that to us at CircuitPythonDay at Adafruit .com to let us know so we can. Um, we can promote those things or include your ideas and so on and so forth. Um, all of that is in the 
uh, Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. You can join at adafruitdaily.com. Um, thank you to Anne for putting it together every week. And we have a link to the draft. So if you have any submissions, uh, ping Anne on Discord, tweet to at n underscore engineer, or you can submit a pull request to the newsletter itself. Um, the latest newsletter is always in the drafts folder of that repo. If somebody could pop that link in, that would be great. And that is community news. Perfect. <clears throat> Thank you for posting the link. All right, the next step is the state of circuit Python libraries and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It gives an idea of the health of the project um, and lets us highlight uh, new folks who are contributing um, or folks who have been contributing for a while. Um, and it just gives us a ch chance to talk about the project away from what it is we're doing and more about how things are going by the numbers. So first up, overall, and this is about the entire project, including CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Uh, the number is huge, and there's a reason for that. Um, 502 pull requests merged. This is not an accurate number. Um, it turns out uh, we had someone go through and delete um, unused branches from the libraries, and, and the way that Adabot, which is our script that gets all this information for us, the way that Adabot works is it looks for, or one of the things it looks for is the last time that a repo was updated or that a PR was updated. And it, it uh, so Adabot assumed that the update, which was simply the branch being deleted, um, was an actual update to the PR. And so it reads as though uh, 400 and 94 libraries were library um, PRs were merged and that's completely inaccurate. So um, the library statistics this week will not be accurate. The core statistics will still be accurate. So uh, we had 18 authors, which I think may still be accurate. Um, and uh, a new name that I don't recognize is Syscorn. That might be the only new one. Um, and we had 14 reviewers, which I believe is also still accurate, uh, and that's excellent to see because the more reviewers we have, um, the more authors we can support. We had 23 issues closed by 12 people and 10 opened by 9 people. So overall, we are down on issues, which is excellent. So overall, the current CircuitPython core focus is Wi-Fi and HCI underscore BLEIO. The goal is to do another 6x release this week. We've seen a lot of new folks helping out in the core, which is excellent. The libraries are seeing a steady increase as Adafruit ramps back up with manufacturing new boards. There's been a flutter of activity on the libraries over the past week if we've done, as we've done some housekeeping. Blinka is continuing to grow. Melissa is working to add the STM32MP1 board to Blinka, and over the last week, uh, there was an update to SPI for the FT232H. Um, thank you to everyone who's been participating, and we are looking forward to see what you continue to contribute. And with that, I will turn it over to Scott to talk about the core. Hello, thank you, Katni. All right, so for the core, we had seven pull requests merged from eight different authors. Uh, Syscorn is also relatively new, has been doing a lot of uh, documentation improvements, so thank you to Syscorn in particular. And uh, two reviewers, myself and Jeff, so thanks to us both. Uh, we have 18 open pull requests, which is kind of a bit much for us. Um, and only a few of those are in the last week. So we are getting a bit of a backlog. So let's keep that in mind this week and, and take a look at stuff. Uh, issues wise, we had one closed issue by one person and one open by one person. So we're net zero for a total of 317 open issues. Uh, the way that we track our, how on top of uh, issues we are, we we have um, different milestones, and the 6.0, 6.x, and 6xx are kind of like the stuff we plan on doing uh, pretty quickly. Other stuff is uh, more longer term. We have a long-term bucket with 283 open issues, which is kind of a catch-all. 
Um, and then uh, we also have a uh, count for how many are not assigned a milestone, which is the ones that we need to triage. And this week, that number is zero. So uh, we're on top of our issues, which is awesome. So that's it for the core. All right. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Next up is the libraries. Uh, so once again, 494 pull requests merged is inaccurate. Uh, we had nine authors and 14 reviewers. Um, if you want to see a list of the PRs that Adabot thinks is merged, I've included a link in the notes doc. It's not really worth looking at because it's not accurate, but normally we include it, so I want to make sure it was included. Um, leaving us with 42 open pull requests, which I believe is the same as last week. It might be one more. Um, we had 18 issues closed by eight people and nine opened by eight people, leaving us with 184 open issues. Nine of those are labeled as good first issues. If you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython, uh, the libraries are a great place to start. You can visit circuitpython.org slash contributing, and you will find a list of open PRs, a list of open issues, and a list of uh, library infrastructure issues. Um, and those are all a good place to start. The issues can be searched by label, and we've been putting a lot of effort into trying to keep all of them labeled. So if um, your level is looking for something super basic, those good first issues are for you. If you're looking for something more complicated and involved, check out bugs and enhancements. And uh, we have a guide on working with Git and GitHub uh, in CircuitPython. So if you are new to all of that, uh, we are here to help you. So don't be intimidated by the process. If you are looking to contribute, check us out on Discord, check us out on GitHub. Um, there are many ways to get a hold of us and we are happy to help you learn. Uh, in the terms of library updates in the past seven days, we had one new library, the MS8607, and a number of updated libraries as well. And to get all the latest libraries, you can visit circuitpython.org slash libraries and download the latest bundle. And with that, I will turn it over to Melissa to talk about Blinka. Uh, sorry, just trying to find the button here and the document, which disappeared. Here we go. So for uh, Blinka this week, uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. And oh, where did it go? Ah, and uh, this week we had uh, uh, sorry, uh, one pull request merged by one author and two reviewers. Uh, there are two open pull requests at this point, um, and there were four closed issues by four people and zero open by zero people, leaving uh, 23 open issues. And there, according to this, there are no PyPI downloads in the last week, so I'm not sure if something's broken on that. Uh, and there are currently 52 supported boards. And that's it. Thanks, Melissa. All right. Um, yeah, the PyPI downloads thing is something probably worth looking into. Uh, with that, that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Huggerports. Huggerports is a chance to talk about awesome things that people are doing in the community. Um, and this is something where you can talk about something that happened to you directly or something you witnessed. Um, it's just a it's time to call people out for doing something good uh, i will start and we'll go down the list alphabetically um, if you are lurking i will skip over you if you are text only or lurking with notes i will read your notes um, just as if you were going through the list um we'll read you when we would get to you and um i think that's all we need to know um, and if, if you want to participate, um, make sure that you're uh, added to the CircuitPythonistas group. Um, and uh, if not, let us know. Or if you don't want your vo uh, voice recorded or that sort of thing, um, you can always put notes in the notes doc and then uh, I will just read them off for you. 
um, which I can also do if your mic malfunctions and so on and so forth. All right, so with that, let's get started. So uh, first and foremost, uh, hug reports to Foamy Guy and Feta2 for becoming uh, new moderators on the Adafruit Discord. Um, we have had a major influx in um, spam, and so having more moderators is super crucial and really appreciate them uh, volunteering to join us. Uh, a hug report to Hire Effect, Dishipu, and Electronic Harry for becoming the new PCB helpers on Discord. Um, these are folks who already were helping out in the PCB design channel, and uh, it made perfect sense to highlight them and um, create the PCB helpers role, just as we have uh, the CircuitPython helpers role and the community helpers role. Um, and uh, so that is, is excellent. Um, and thanks to Mr. Certainly for helping out with a moderation team expectations document. Um, we have best practices and things we do, and just the team has evolved to be dynamic in a particular way. And so if we're bringing new people on, we want to make sure they know about that. We want to make sure they know what they're getting into, if they still want to join us, um, that sort of thing. And I wanted to have it all in one place because every time I've promoted someone to moderator, I've gone through the whole thing every time and never documented it. So I put together a brain dump that Mr. Certainly turned into an amazing document, and I wanted to give a major hug report to that. Um, and a group hug for everyone I've missed because uh, I did not do my hug reports before, right before the meeting. Um, if I think of anything later, I will point it out, but that is what I have for this week. And next up is Kmatch98. Okay, thanks, Katni. So first, uh, thanks to Dave Stills for the learn guide on extending CircuitPython. And uh, then to follow up on that was Deshipu and Jepler for some uh, some major little hints, let's call them, about how to make new CircuitPython functions that help me help me get started. Uh, then the Foamy guy for his continued testing of a new library called Bitmap Label. And then lastly, KJW for finding a text issue and giving examples so I could figure out what was wrong. Excellent. Thank Thanks. you. Next up is Maker Melissa. Hi, I just wanted to give a hug report to Tanu for your suggestions on the Matrix Portal Library. Uh, I give a hug report to Tinkering Tech for updating your board info on circuitpython.org over the weekend. Uh, to Michael Lass for addressing some libgpiod Pulsin issues on GitHub. And to Chris Gamble for providing uh, the getting to Blinky videos for learning KitKat. And that's it. Thank you. Next up, I have notes for a couple folks. Um, for Mr. Certainly, says to Katni and Crayola for the awesome NeoPixel animation library. And thank you to all the new Discord helpers and mods. Seeing folks step up and be a role model is wonderful to see. I also have notes from Stargirl who says community and mods for not only keeping our community safe, but also for looking after one another. And next up is Scott. Hello. Uh, I think it's Bleep Track uh, from Twitter and on Discord. So thanks to them for the very pretty procedurally generated PCB designs that are running, uh, that will run CircuitPython. Uh, hug report to Syscorn for continuing to improve, improve our stubs and docs. I will get to your PRs, I promise. <laughs> I'm a little behind on that. Uh, thank you to Kmatch98 for jumping into the core CircuitPython work with the Blitz stuff. Um, thank you again to Crayola and Katni for making NeoPixel animations fast. I've seen a lot of people be very happy with it. So uh, thanks again for doing that work. Um, hug report to Gadgetoid uh, for creating a CircuitPython driver uh, for some Pimeroni stuff. I'm very excited to see you jumping into it. I know it's a big ecosystem at this point, but we're happy to have you and ha happy to help you understand the way that we do things. Um, thank you uh, to the interns who are wrapping up this summer, particularly uh, Dylan uh, DiHarada for being a great team member this summer. Uh, good luck at college this, this fall. And then uh, from Major League Hacking, we had Kayla Lincoln and Stella 
who worked to improve Glider over the summer. Uh, and those of you who don't know, Glider is was my like prototype app uh, for editing CircuitPython over uh, from a mobile device, which I still would love to get back to. And they made some progress on that this summer, which has been really awesome to see. So thanks to all those folks. Thank you. Next up, I have mm -hmm. notes for Brent, who says, uh, hug report to Jerry N for Laura build size reduction. And next up is Dan. Well, scrolling back. OK, just one uh, significant one this week. Thanks to Jeff, who spent time fixing, uh, finding significant storage space savings. Well, Scott said that already. I wasn't paying attention. Like 600 bytes in the one math library. Thank you very much. Which reduces the pressure on our small builds. OK. We filled it up again already, Dan. <laughs> I have a, <laughs> right. I, 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 Never mind. I have a joke about that, but I won't say right now. <laughs> what software people and what hardware people do. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is David Cloud. So, hack report to Scott for showing how to modify with KitKat the Feather ESP32 S2 Feather adapter he made. I'm new to KitKat, so how do you spell that? And thank you to Jerry for the GCC 10 toolchain for the Raspberry Pi. And thank you to Jeff for the work on the SD card. I've read his loan guide and three others, and I've got a report somewhere that I should share. And thank you to Gadgetoid for making the Envira Plus Featherwing. David, you cut out. I don't hear you anymore. OK, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Um, oh, it might be me. So we'll sit tight. Wow. OK. Yeah, that was me. Um, David, I think we got through. Be able to pick up from there. No, I didn't crash. Um, my network failed. Ah, so you failed over. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I, this first thing I checked was that OBS was still recording. Because <laughs> I assumed, <laughs> I assumed that's what it was. All right, David, I think we got through um, through yours. Um, and next up, I have some notes that I will read off. Uh, from Do Wester, a hug report to all for still being here. And next up is Foamy Guy. I can't hear Foamy Guy. I apparently can't hear anybody. Recording. Okay. All right. Um, Tim, you want to try again? Yep. Can you hear me? I can now. OK, perfect. Uh, so this week, I want to give a report to uh, the Discord user Skur. Um, so I saw them helping out uh, actually in a few different channels um, lately on the Discord, uh, especially helping through uh, helping some folks through some really tough issues. They were working with them for a while very patiently. Uh, so really appreciate it. Uh, the help that they're giving to people, and and as well as just being um, you know a great community member across a bunch of different channels. Um, to Cadney and the other moderators, uh, Bruce as well for the excellent document, um, and you know for considering me and allowing me to join the, the moderation team. Um, to Kmatch98 uh, for digging into the core some more this week and working on a, a cool new uh, feature that is going to make it faster to uh, copy. Uh, pieces of bitmaps around, so bitmap fully. Um, great work there. 
And then uh, lastly, just a group hug to everybody. All right, thank you. Uh, next up is Higher Effect. Uh, just a group hug this week, especially to the hardworking community moderators and uh, anybody else working on our issue list. All right, thanks. Next up is Jeff. Hello, I want to lead off with a group hug because I know that invariably I forget somebody. So, you know, if you're going to help me, you got to help me like on Sunday afternoon or Monday morning, not Thursday afternoon. Uh, but anyway, I also wanted to specifically thank Dan for remembering to uh, mention the memory savings that I found upstream. Uh, I don't always do as good a job as I should at identifying what we can contribute back to our parent project or however you want to characterize the relationship of MicroPython. So that is good and it is a good reminder. I want to thank uh, Adafruit for open source PCB designs. And I have some purple PCBs incoming based off of an Adafruit design that I've modified to my needs. Um, and I think our, we have a new Japanese translator and I believe that that is Syscorn. And I hope that we can get the new Japanese translation merged soon. But as I mentioned, we're out of space again, and the Japanese translation will be the new largest translation. So fun times. All right, thanks. Um, Higher Effect came in with one more uh, hug report, which is that uh, should, to, to me, should have thanked you for helping set up the PCB helpers role. Thank you for that. So next up is Jerry. Hi. Excuse me. Um, yeah, thanks to, to Jeff for the uh, size reduction work, um, even if you, we are going to lose it all again, but it's, it's a help. And um, welcome to the new Discord moderators. Um, appreciate the help there and a group hug to everybody else. All right. Excellent. And that is Hug Reports. Thank you for your patience when my internet failed. All right, next up is status updates. Um, status updates is also held as a round robin in the exact same way. Um, lurking folks are lurking, text folks only, I will read notes off. Um, I will call on you when we get to you in the list. Uh, please take a couple minutes to talk about what you've done over the last week since um, since the last meeting and what you're going to do over the next week until the next meeting. Um, and if you want to include something fun that you're working on, feel free as there is not um, enough of that going around. So we, we like to hear about whatever it is you're working on. It doesn't have to be uh, CircuitPython related necessarily. So uh, with that, I will get started. Um, I'm going to have to read from my notes because I didn't actually put anything in the document. Um, so last week, since the last meeting, um, I updated, let's see, I updated an, like, I don't want to say two or three guides with um, Stemma QT versions. So we're adding Stemma connectors to various um, pre-existing breakouts and we need to update the guides to show the new versions because they're much easier to work with. Um, so that was for the BME 680 and the 0.96 inch OLED display. Um, and then um, created or started a guide for, I'm sorry, assisted with the ICM 20948 guide, um, created the uh, initial parts of the guide for um, Product 4701, which I'm, the name is long. Um, it's a RFID um, NFC chip that's programmable over I squared C. Uh, there's only an Arduino library and it's not our lib, so I didn't do that part, but that has been published. So if you pick up that chip, we do have a guide for it, uh, but there's no CircuitPython support at this time. And then I created a bunch of fritzing diagrams. I'm not gonna list off. Um, and let's see, a couple of miscellaneous things done, including verifying that the CPX doesn't work with make code on uh, an iPad. That was at the request of 
someone on Discord. I, I looked into it because I had the proper adapter and they did not. Um, a hug report I did forget was thank you to JP for helping me out with um, learning how to create reusable assets uh, in Premiere. I do the newsletter recap video every week and there are a number of portions of it that are um, identical every week and so I'm kind of wasting time re-recording them every time but I didn't know how to create assets and then add them into an existing recording so I now know how to do that. And then uh, we already talked about the new PCB helpers role and I think that about covers last week. Um, so this week, uh, I am going to be filing an issue on Adabot to add cookie cutter to the PR issue review checks. Um, so we know what's going on with that. Um, I am going to be, I have one more fritzing object to create. I have a couple of miscellaneous things. And then um, I'm going to do a PR sweep on the libraries. Uh, I've been asked to take by an author to take a look at a PR um, and got the okay to take a look at the rest and see what's going on with them. So I'm going to go through there and see if there's anything I can do. And then um, the final, well, two, two final things. One, by the end of this week, I want to update the code of conduct to reflect the changes that we made. Um, they were fairly simple, but um, they involved removing usernames of moderators and just saying, please contact community moderators. Um, and so, and because I think one of the usernames has changed since that document was created, like it's, it's not valid, it's not up to date, and that's important to have correct, so I wanna do that. And then also, we're going to add an Adabot check to uh, look for repos that CircuitPython library repos that don't have descriptions, which is the little line of little tagline type thing that goes at the top of the repo page, the code page on the repo. And um, we uh, want to add descriptions to everything, which we're not entirely certain is very automatable. So that's something I will be going through and doing um, uh, over the course of this week and who knows how long. And that's where I'm at. Thank you, Jeff, for taking notes. <laughs> All right, next up is uh, KMatch98. Okay, thanks, Katni. So most of my work continues on displaying text on screens through the display text library, particularly label.py. Um, KJW identified an issue where text, uh, if you start it with a blank string and then, then add text later, it ends up in a different position than you if you created it with text. So uh, there's a PR to resolve that. Um, also, uh, the standard label library tends to take up quite a bit of space. Uh, so I've been looking for ways to reduce the amount of memory usage for displaying text. So I created and submitted a PR for a new library which displays text using a bitmap instead of tile grids. Uh, and according to Foamy Guy's tests, it seems to win out from memory usage on most, most cases, if not all. Uh, so there's a PR there for that. Um, one downside to dealing with bitmaps is uh, it's pretty slow in Python to, to copy bitmaps over. So I've been learning, thanks to the, the group's help on how to, to create CircuitPython extensions. So I've created a bitmap, what I call a slice copy function, which Deshapu informed me and educated me. It's called a blit function. Uh, and that indeed has a big, big speed improvement, uh, like several seconds, even for small bits of text. So, um, so I need to, this week, clean that up and submit a PR on that once I figure out how to parse input parameters properly. And... Uh, along the lines, I want to draw a diagram of how CircuitPython and C work together and how those links are made as I'm sort of struggling through that, uh, understanding that process and all the different uh, uh, names of, of things. So I hope to have a diagram which at least gives a, a, a visual look at how that, that all goes together. Excellent. So that's what I've got. Yep. Is that something you're willing to share when you're done? Sure, and I'll ask for help to because some some are open questions of, of highlighted 
things that I don't understand. So oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll be sure to pass that around and people can make sure it's accurate and, and I'll learn along that process. Excellent. We are here to help. Okay, thanks. All right, next up is maker Melissa. Hello. Last week, I finished up refactoring the Matrix portal library, and I helped uh, Jen Park make some adjustments to his on-air code so it works with the library changes. Uh, I started working on adding the STM32MP1 board to Blinka, uh, still establishing the specific OS setup path I want to use. Uh, I attempted to build a Debian image, but that failed, so I'm trying again. Uh, this week, I'm going to continue working on adding that, and hopefully the Matrix Portal Library will be... I can get that published and added to the bundle. I'm just waiting on the PR approval at this point. And uh, besides that, I've been working on learning uh, KiCad because it's some board projects I wanted to design. And that's it. Excellent. Thanks, Melissa. Next up, I have notes from Stargirl who says, moved, still waiting on my stuff to get here. Order PCBs for my next project, managed to brick and then unbrick a SAMD21 by misusing the memory bus. What fun. Next up is Scott. Hello. Uh, last week I said scanning ran but didn't produce any results and it turns out an antenna is really useful <laughs> uh, to get an, a result. So I put an antenna on there and scanning seemed to work. So I expanded the, the, the network results that come back from a scan to include more information. And then I added the IP address module as well so that you can look at your IP using a nice class to wrap it up. Um, I added an implementation for ping at the end of last week, but I did not get to the point of actually testing it. So I will test being able to, to do uh, ping as a way to just like make sure that your network's working. I took Friday off for a hike, which was awesome. And I still owe Jeff a picture from that hike, uh, which I, I can post shortly here. Uh, this week, I'm really focused on adding a socket pool, which is kind of like socket, but not quite socket. Um, and that will hopefully get us TCP and UDP support uh, so that we can basically do networky stuff. Um, I'll definitely focus on the client side of TCP and UDP for the for a while, but uh, we'll probably follow up later and be able to do the server stuff as well. Um, I've also been hitting this issue with uh, corrupting the file system or something very weird and very uh, making making everything unhappy, where the both CircuitPython and the host computer can't read the file system anymore. Um, I have a feeling that that's going to suck. Uh, hopefully not too much time, but some time this week to figure that out because it's kind of a showstopper uh, when using the Wi-Fi stuff. So uh, I'm all heads down on Wi-Fi stuff is my plan. All right. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. Next up is Dan. Okay. I've been uh, continuing on um, BLEIO HCI. Um, using the ESP32, not the ESP32-S2. And so it's been chunking along. I've now finished uh, service discovery, which is when a BLE central asks a peripheral, like, so what do you provide anyway? And that's working now. So what it means is that the Blue Fruit Connect app sees and talks to the board that's running my code. And now the next thing to do is implement characteristic reading and writing and notifying, and then we'll be able to do BLE UART. But I'm in the middle of the characteristic stuff, so it should be only a day or two or three more before I get something demonstrable. Um, another minor thing I did is that um, we get these security updates or notifications from GitHub a lot, it notices that you're using a version of something or other with a security flaw. And so in this case, it was something pretty minor in the CircuitPython.org repo. And I tried to fix it, and it just didn't work at all. And it turns out um, uh, we're using GitHub pages, which depends on a lot of libraries. And we were using it in sort of an ad hoc way. And instead, we switched to using a Ruby gem called GitHub pages which manages all the dependencies. So I switched to that and it's much 
easier to keep track of now. So Ruby has the same dependency nightmares that other things have unless you manage things carefully. And finally, somebody who uses Circup, which I don't use, noticed that we weren't supporting 6x bundles. And so I fixed that. OK. I guess it was you who broke circuitpython.org slash contributing then. It's, Maybe. It's been fixed, but Summersoft noticed over the weekend it was showing nothing. <laughs> I looked at all the pages, but I guess I didn't look at contributing. Okay. Yeah, Justin yeah, already well, fixed they, it. it. It's it's yeah. not a big deal, but okay. He he mentioned an update, and I when you, right. when you said that, I was like, ah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I looked at what the things I thought I thought I looked at everything, but obviously not. Okay. No worries. <laughs> okay. All right. Next up is David Cloud. So this week I've been working with the Featherwing and Vibro Plus. Uh, so I tested the new library LTR559 from Gadgetoid, and it's now in the community bundle. Uh, I also made something with the Clue and the Rainbow Hat. Um, and at the same time, somebody was doing something else with CircuitPython and the Rainbow Hat, so that's great. I've done something with the SD card where you can use the micro SD card as a cartridge on the pGamer. So basically, when your code.py start, it check if there is an SD card. And if there is an SD card, it changed the path for accessing the library. And it tried to run a main.py, which is on the SD card. So I wonder if that already exists or not. But that way, you can have different piece of code on different SD card um, independently of your flash. I've made some unboxing. Uh, thanks to the Pimeroni birthday uh, stuff, I got more uh, MCU. So now I've got a M4 and an NRF Sense. So I've got most of the important one. And I can do a lot of tests with various code on various CPU. And my Maximi 2 color came. I made a mistake because I took the fully built in so I cannot remove the STM32, um, but it's great and it ran basic. And I'm going to try to see if something is possible with CircuitPython. Excellent. Thank you, David. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Um, so uh, this week, I kind of uh, just tucked them all into one list. I've had a little bit less time for CircuitPython this week. Uh, because I'm teaching JavaScript in the evening, so that's eating up some of my time. But um, so I got a single list. Uh, a couple of the things I'm doing is, uh, or have done, is um, testing out the display text library changes, uh, and I'm hoping to get uh, some more of that done this afternoon. Actually, I got the day off work, so I'm gonna uh, hopefully take another look at those um, display text PRs. Um, I got back to work a little bit on my uh, layouts library, so I think I'm uh, pretty well satisfied with the actual syntax uh, in, in the JSON and uh, the property names and everything that it uses for defining the layouts. Um, and I kind of wanted to get that squared away before I started building on top of it a uh, couple layout objects that will uh, kind of place things for you uh, based on some rules, like a linear layout, put things in a list, uh, or a grid layout, might put things in a grid. Um, so got started on the, um, the linear layout for that. Um, of course, uh, joined the moderators team, so uh, spent some time reading up on the the uh, excellent welcome guide there and learning the ropes of um, you know what that's all about and, and how to contribute that way. Um, this morning, I was taking a look around. Uh, actually, as I was working on the uh, the layouts library, I was noticing that uh, the display button library is a little bit different than most of the other display I/O uh, objects um, in that once you create a button in order to add it to the display. Uh, you have to actually access like a dot group property on the button, uh, whereas pretty much all the other um, display I/O objects, at least the ones I'm familiar with, uh, after you create them with the constructor, you could just add them directly to a group or to the display. Um, so I'm working on a, a little tweak there. I think it should be relatively easy um, to make that tweak and make those uh, buttons work the same as the rest of the display I/O objects. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what I got for this week. So thanks. All right. Thanks, Bummy Guy. Next up is Paragraph. Hello. 
so last week, uh, I worked mostly on pulse out and pulse in for the ESP32-S2 using the uh, remote control module. Uh, pulse out ended up being pretty straightforward, though um, it uh, kind of reverts some changes, or it, it suggests that we could make some changes to the API uh, because uh, the ESP32 has a dedicated control for uh, IR, basically IR remote uh, control, you know, uh, pulse pulse modulation, basically. And uh, most of the existing ports assume that we don't have uh, a dedicated peripheral for that. And so, uh, you know, it does things like assuming that you have to use a PWM out project, object, which Pulse IO uh, on the ESP32-S2 doesn't actually need. Um, so we talked a little bit about um, maybe implementing some uh, new API changes for that um, uh, coming up in 7.0. Uh, I did some maintenance on uh, the NeoPixel PR, uh, basically testing this bug uh, that was related to uh, trying to dereference a null pointer. It was causing a crash, uh, but it was all the way back in main code. I'm still kind of poking at that because I don't, I'm not really that great with uh, the kind of run code PY part of CircuitPython, the, the kind of main loop that handles uh, kind of exceptions and that kind of stuff. So um, still a couple little things that need to get fixed there. And then uh, I worked a little bit on the STM32F1. Um, the big obstacle to that was getting a development board. I found out that there are very, very few STM32F1 development boards um, that are capable, uh, that are running the F1s. There's a lot of different F1 chips, many of which are very powerful. But uh, the ones that actually have development boards tend to be the really, really super cheap, tiny ones. Um, it's hard to find a development board that has uh, the bigger... Uh, sizes, but I'm now getting a development board sent to me from China from the folks who are interested in seeing the F1 port. So uh, I will be able to test that hopefully sometime in the coming weeks whenever that shows up. Um, this week, I'll be working on wrapping up the NeoPixel and getting Pulse In and Pulse Out in for a review. That's my top priority. Um, beyond that, I've got just a couple things uh, that I want to work on. Uh, I ran into some dock issues this past week working on Pulse In and Pulse Out. Um, uh, there's some stuff I want to clean up, uh, just really, really tiny changes, probably only a morning's worth of work. Uh, but then after that is just bug wrangling. Um, like Scott said, or, uh, uh Scott and Katni noted, we've got kind of a good, uh, buildup of issues and PRs. And a lot of them, uh, are stuff that I'm involved with and I want to be able to, uh, make those numbers go down if I can. Um, especially some of the older, uh, you know, i.mxprs and stm32prs that I'm either reviewing or uh, working on directly. So um, just want to be able to prioritize those and, and hopefully uh, get that issue list uh, taken care of or at least reduced. So that's it for me. All right. Thanks, Hard Effect. Next up is Jeff. Hello again. So um, last week, the most impactful thing I did, if you want to judge by hug reports anyway, was the memory size reductions that uh, help these most resource constrained M0 builds. I also worked on the sharp memory display um, code in the core, but I struggled to make meaningful progress after expecting it. Eh, after expecting it to be easy, I've got some memory corruption. Um, and at the end of the day, Friday, I just kind of stepped away from it and I haven't looked at it yet. Hopefully when I come at it with fresh eyes, uh, it'll be easy to resolve, but you never can tell with these things. So this week that work continues. Um, and there are some other items. I need to check in with Dave P about uh, his pulse in PR, about some Git problems that he was running into. And I let that go all of last week. And I think that PR Scott might benefit from your interest if you have time to get into the pulse IO mind. But maybe I'm wrong about who did the initial implementation on that. Uh, and then I have one quick question. There's a PR on the core to add a new board, but they are in turn waiting for a USB PID allocation from PID.codes. They give them away free, but it's been like uh, since April that they merged a PR allocating a new PID. Should we go ahead and merge or should we wait on that? I think they have a history of getting PIDs from us, so we could probably just do that. Uh... Okay. Um, I guess I can go suggest that on the PR or check with Lamar because there's been at least one where we've said you you've been doing this a lot maybe you should do your own but I think that was another organization 
Yeah, just ping me on it. I, we've been a little inconsistent about it, but uh -huh. um, if the pig codes folks are not getting back to them, then I uh, yeah, it, we could probably just do it. Um, it's like a few. It's like five thousand dollars a year for people, right? Um, which is when you're just starting out. Yeah, for the little people, it's little. crazy. And Pid Codes is an organization who is allocating. Uh, these PIDs for open source projects, and it's great when it works. Um, but I don't know who is in charge of running that project or what is causing them to be slow right now. And there's a lot of things that uh, could cause you to be behind on, yeah. on your stuff. All right. Well, I will reach out to. Well, okay. I I will get you that URL, and you can decide which direction to go. Then. Yeah. Just ping me on stuff. All right. And then uh, my fun stuff, which I alluded to earlier, is I made a board with the SI5351 clock synthesizer, plunked a Trinket M0 on it uh, so that it will become a self-contained frequency generator that remembers what frequencies it's supposed to generate. And that board comes today, and I'll get to do that little fine pitch soldering that I love so very much. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's what I'm up to. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Next up is Jerry. Uh, hello. Let's see. So finally, finally submitted a PR with the uh, freezing the RFM 9x library into the Feather M0 RFM 9x build, so people can play with it. Um, came up again on on a, in a forum chat. So finally decided to get it out there and, and at, least, at least made somebody happy. And um, right now it um, it can run the guide. <laughs> that everyone kept kept getting hung up on, so um, that that's nice to see. One thing I had to remove in order to make it fit was Pulse IO, um, which means you can't use any of the DHT sensors. Which we can decide if that's anybody cares or not. Um, I certainly wouldn't mind if we never saw them again. Um, <laughs> and then um, the uh, Pulse IO also right now is not working for the Sam D Fit Twenty One anyway. Um, and with the Jeff's new changes, it might fit um, when it does work, but probably not for Japanese. <laughs> so I'm not sure we're going to get it in there anyway. And um, we'll just have to decide on that. And let's see. And then so now that's done, I'm going to do the same thing for the RFM 69 and get a version of out, out there that people can start getting a little more use out of CircuitPython on. Uh, also made a quick change to the RFM 9x library um there was something that carter brought up that the i think it was with the ft 232h there's no um built-in pull-ups um so the way the code was written it needed an internal pull-ups in order to do the reset turns out they really weren't necessary and actually redoing it without them makes it consistent with all the other libraries we have for different for the rfm69 and for the arduino side so that was an easy fix and I've been doing, continuing to try and experiment with GCC 10. It's working fine for everything except the SAMD 51s. Um, it's still, they still don't work for me when I build, build GCC 10, build them with GCC 10. And for fun, let's see, I can put a picture up here. I finally retired my, um, um, oops, put the wrong chat there. Sorry. Oh, well. If you go look in pet photos, <laughs> you'll see my picture. I'll move it over later. Um, the uh, I had a birdhouse that I made with the camera in it that um, um, had really good success. I had two sets of birds move in. Uh, first, some tufted titmice had a family in there, and they moved out, and a bunch of house wrens took over and filled it up with sticks and made a new nest. And they all moved out a couple of days ago. So now I've just I'm taking it down and cleaning it out and learned a bunch of things. To do differently for, for next year's birds but it was a fun project excellent thanks jerry yep <clears throat> and that is status updates thank you everyone for participating and now we move on to the last section which is in the weeds and in the weeds is an opportunity for more long-form open-ended discussions that don't make sense in status updates um we have two Two, two folks added three topics, um, so we'll go ahead and get started with that. And for the first 
set, I will turn it over to David Gloud. So just one point that was discussed just before the meeting is that uh, issue with font for Display.io. There are a lot of fonts and duplicate into the learn guide and maybe it would be great for Adafruit to maintain some repository with those. Don't think there is need for discussion, but okay. Oh, you're saying uh, a separate repo that is for fonts only? Yeah, and okay. maybe a, a learn guide to to show them or to say that it exists. I don't know. Okay, um, I will look into it at least. Um, added it to my list of things. Um, no emergency. Yeah. <laughs> And the other thing, I think you discussed that recently, um, but in the library from uh, Gadgetoid, he, in the simple test, he needed to have I2C. Mm -hmm. So I made it using the new board.i2c rather than to do that with Buzi.io. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, what is the new standard? Does it work with all version or are there limitations? If you can repeat that, maybe. Um, yeah, the only reason you would want to use the bus IO version is if you have to set frequency. That's not yet, yet, maybe something that we implement eventually, but it's not yet something you can do with the board.i squared C version. Um, however, the board.i squared C is preferred. Um, what it does do is, um, it actually makes it easier, I think, to, um, have multiple I squared C uh, hardware bits um, because it doesn't uh, it 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 doesn't hold the pin, like it doesn't initialize the pins and then not let go if I remember correctly all I know is we've had issues where we people have tried to implement multiple I squared C um, objects yeah, with the the library. Yeah, yeah. It, if, if it was in the library as the bus IO version um, it it was you you would try to implement the next one and it would fail but if we put it in the library as board.i squared c um it allows for multiples a uh, more streamlined manner okay perfect well i did the one the right one yes yes you did um basically as long as you don't have if you need to alter the pins um to run i squared c on something other than scl and sda uh, use bus io and if you need to alter the um, frequency, use the bus IO one. Otherwise, use the board.i squared C. Perfect. All right, excellent. Um, next up is higher effect. All right, this is uh, this was just basically like a little um, just kind of a check in because uh, I know it's been discussed before, and I just don't remember what the resolution of it was. Um, but uh, when you search for our, the CircuitPython Read the Docs pages on Google, um, we uh, frequently only have the oldest versions of the documentation show up. Uh, mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll end up on a page that's for, you know, like Pulse.io on like CircuitPython 00, 00 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know we talked about, we, we've, we've added a much more prominent uh, issue uh or uh, like a, a more prominent warning for this yeah. um but uh i went i i got stuck on i i got confused by an api yesterday i got kind of frustrated over it and i i did some research and i did find some stack overflow posts that were talking about uh sphinx level fixes um and it seems like at least some people got uh their documentation to only forward to the most recent stuff uh mm -hmm. or or they've modified their robots.txt or whatever it is so um I was just wondering if we if we ever resolved that or or we kind of... did not. Um, it would be greatly appreciated if you could send links to those posts to Cir okay. Circuit Python at Adafruit. Okay, that goes sure. to a bunch of us, um, so we oh. can take a look at that. Okay, I, I no guarantees that they're. I, I don't understand, you know, Sphinx and and kind of the docs system. Nobody as, understands as well Sphinx. As I could. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I think it, it seemed like almost like the, the Stack Overflow posts I was reading were vacillating a little bit. Like you'd have some people who were like, oh, this doesn't have us for happen for us. Or, you know, oh, I fixed it just by like changing this one variable. Now it doesn't happen anymore. 
yeah. then you have other people who are like, you know, oh, I did, did all this stuff and, you know, it doesn't look like the solution is working for me. So, okay. um, but still, it hopefully, might give us some place to start or Jeff found something as well. Yeah. Instead of emailing, please file an issue. Oh, okay. That works too. Then it'll be public. Sure. Sure. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I'll put something up. Uh, did we have an old issue for this, or or would this be the first time that it would be reported publicly on the on the? Uh, when you start typing, in it, yeah, it was to say when you start typing in the title, it'll give you closed and open issues if you have the um, new sure. setup of GitHub running. Um, it'll show you previous issues that may be related, so that you don't duplicate them. But file a fresh one anyway, because this is not a. Um, aspect of it we've looked into per se okay um and do you want the issue on uh, the main circuit python repo or do you want it on circuitpython.org uh circuit python repo for sure um okay. please tag me directly on it um i i get more notifications from the libraries than i do from the core so sure okay cool i'll i'll, I'll see if i'll just try and dig up everything that i was looking at this morning okay. and uh to what I can post. Oh, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you for looking into it. It's definitely, I run into that all the time. Because I, I still Google our documentation as well, and inevitably I have to go down and update the version that I'm looking at. Right, right. Uh, also, when are we uh, switching over to, I, I, I always still land on 5.3. Is that still the what's supposed to be up for the doc? Yeah, that's the default, because that's the latest stable. Oh, OK. Um, and note that C Python has this problem too. <laughs> like I always oh, yeah. find Python two docs when I'm looking for Python stuff, which is annoying. Interesting. Well, hopefully I'm not wrong about just like straight up wrong about having found some people who solved it. But... Oh, that's worth looking into. Yeah, exactly. It, even if none of them work, it's still now we now we've tried some more things. You know, it could be something that we can solve in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. And unless anybody else has anything quick, um, that was in the weeds. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for August 10th, 2020. Um, we uh, will be hosting the meeting again next Monday, as usual, at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Please feel free to join us. Uh, if you are looking, if you listened into the podcast and you want to join us on Discord, remember that's adafru.it slash Discord. It's also where we host the meeting, so if you'd like to attend, um, feel free. Everyone is welcome. And thank you again to everyone who's been participating in CircuitPython and everyone who is just joining up. Um, and I hope you all have an excellent week. And that is it for our meeting. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, all. See you later. Bye.